Hi there, I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman. This is our 21st Century Superhuman show, and today I have with me Master Psychic Antonia Lau. Antonia, how are you today? Hi, Carrie. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me again. It's very wonderful to be here with you. I'm really excited about this conversation today because we have the summer solstice coming up, the 21st of June time, and I can feel the vibration of what we're plugged into right now and the information that will be coming through. Wow. So this summer solstice, it's like probably the most powerful ever in this cycle of history, right? But with the solstice happening and these changes, we know it, it points to our axial shift or the, the angle of the way the earth goes around the sun in its normal procession. And so we have a season. So in the Northern hemisphere, when we have summer, of course, below the equator, they begin their winter and vice versa. And this is as we see in our modern history. But right now in our own cosmology, we are also headed toward the age, even a larger expanse of a cycle, into the age of Aquarius. We're leaving the age of Pisces, uh, which we know from the biblical era of the time of the inception of the soul we call the Christ of consciousness, Jesus, Yeshua. Now we are really right on the cresp just opening up to the age of Aquarius. And that's what's important. Aquarian is about this ability to perceive. Now, all these things from the Piscean time, we were supposed to inculcate, supposed to have utilized, supposed to have, how can I say it, to our highest benefit before we can matriculate into that new Aquarian age. So what ends up happening is why I'm saying this is important. We've been talking about those songs, the dawning of the age of Aquarius, right. everybody preparing for it. What does it mean? Well, what happens with Aquarius energy is uh, even you, uh, like I said, with your own Aquarian energy, this is an ability for telepathy, number one, between souls. Yes. What ends up happening is they, uh, those souls that come even born in that sign or with a predominant in their personal planets, brought that ability from several cycles of past lives and in between lives where they learn those qualities and they bring it in. And literally what you're finding is that's not just going to happen to now just Aquarian people or, or Aquarians with that or Aquarian in their birth data. What's going to happen is the entire world population will have that ability for telepathy. You'll know. So literally you see beings throughout the cosmos, they don't even open their mouths or use them. It's always been a telepathic communication. And so what you're finding is more and more humans are. Now we can see at this time we're dealing with the, the lockdown and um, things like this is the old age literally coming to an end. Right. The old structures, right. our old governments, our old thoughts, bureaucracies are being torn away. But in this Aquarian age, the veil is being pulled away. Yes. So we can yes. see what's been going on behind the scenes because as human souls on the planet today, we promised to see it, to view it, and not ever allow it to happen on this planet again. Yeah, I was going to say, I, we ha haven't we been in like a 50-year overlap of the two ages, kind of um, cro one crossing into the other? Because I remember when it, it came a certain date and we thought, oh, it's the age of Aquarius. And then it was like, no, it's still the age of Pisces and Aquarius kind of overlapping each other. Correct. And I know I've been feeling really telepathic more and more and yes. more this last year. Just, it's like, I just know everything all the time. And I'm realizing more and more the verbal communication we have is almost the lower aspect of our communication and Correct. us paying attention to and tuning into our ability to what we know at extrasensory levels. It just seems so important right now. And remember the extrasensory level that you talk about has been suppressed for the last 2000 years from humans. Right. And people have to remember 
that they chose to incarnate exactly at this time on the planet. And we yes. brought all these tools spiritually innately through us. And we said, no, no, we know it's like that. We can handle that sucker. We can do it no matter what. We'll move it along. We are promised to maintain this soul growth, continued growth, utilizing those spiritual principles. They don't expect sainthood. That's not what I'm speaking of. But all those innate abilities we were born with. Um, and literally, we're lifting the planet. The planet herself is going through a, a process of yes. vibratory rate or change. And we, as humans, are the first time humans are evolving with the planet. Uh, Edgar Cayce states, basically, and I'll bring that in only because he's the 21st century's most um, documented psychic and most confirmed. What people have done is taken poor extrapolations or pieces of what he said, which is normal in the media. But people need to really dig in there, and I usually go dig deep. And what he stated was, this is a normal, natural cycle. It will happen, people, but it could have happened sooner, he states. Between 58 and 98, he saw literally that we were going to grow more spiritually aware. And what happened? Late 50s, all of a sudden people were doing meditation and then yoga into the 60s. And here we go, 90s, everybody's got yoga classes. You know, it's now normal. You see what I'm saying? So he was aware. He said this cycle would have happened sooner, but we weren't spiritually aware to handle it. So our predecessors were still kind of stuck in that Piscean time frame, as you said, that overlap. But people think it's going to be like bling, and then we get that new Aquarian age. There's from it doesn't work that way. It's this beautiful inception, kind of like waves coming, you know, onto the beach more and more progressively until we're, like I said, saturated with that Aquarian energy. And Aquarian energy means it is not for the one person, it's for all, all beings, all creatures, all sentience on the planet. That Aquarian age is everything combined, so we'll be more compassion. We are supposed to be more caring. But Casey says in three Earth cataclysms before, humans failed to spiritualize the planet. That was our promise, and we failed. Mm. We can talk about Lemuria, Atlantis, civilizations. And so, Carrie, now we literally are getting ready for this fourth time. And he says, this time we do it. They can already see that we progress and spiritualize the planet. And it that's doesn't mean we're no Yes. So that's what at, uh, at, at this solstice, what we have coming up is sort of Correct. like a crux time, a Correct. very intense time. And I know when I was reading about it, that there's a very special alignment kind of on the central, the center Correct. of the ellipsis of our orbit around the galactic center, the galactic center. And then also, and it aligns with um, Stonehenge and the great Correct. pyramid of Egypt and Glastonbury and everything. Correct. And I have a Mayan pyramid behind me because that's where I am and the Mayan pyramids and that it's all lined up it all was directing to this time like this is an amazing time that we're here on planet earth we're here together each one of us chose to come in to help be part of this raising of the frequency the raising Correct. of the vibration the 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 living through this connected to our true spirituality connected to our souls and this is so critical People, if they realize, if they take, take a look at the, the Kalakmul, like I said, uh, pyramid behind you, the Mayan pyramid, even the ancient Maya were aware of this knowledge from our brothers and sisters from the cosmos. Yes. And they tried to let us know by a certain time frame, 2012, we were on the runway toward this new phase. And it would happen faster and faster as we, in, uh, we were getting through those increments. And so this beautiful solstice is between a couple of actually three eclipses on top of it. And the eclipses are about sharing wow. the truth, seeing the truth. So we have one coming up shortly, but this year, instead of four eclipses, we have six. So it's even more powerful wow. between the equinoxes, the eclipses, the eclipses hit individually, and they hit the whole world on top of the equinox and expecting us to change. So can you imagine, people forget we are spiritual, physical, and mental okay so it's a really important thing to understand that things that happen physically have a progressive connection mentally and spiritually but they don't realize that so what we have to understand is those concepts are coming stronger so people will know when they walk in the room you'll know things you won't have to say anything no need for governments to lie anymore because the people can see through even yes. now you're seeing 
you're even seeing that now, like this doesn't feel right. Yes. People are getting it. Hence why they might have, you know, tried to separate us those six feet because they thought, oh, it must be through an exchange of our auric energetic field, three feet on either side. No, people. It's through the divine connection, <laughs> your pineal gland, your heart, your soul connected to the, the seed atom at the back of the heart. Those are connecting, but they don't realize that. They've yes. lost their alignment. Yes. Beautiful. I wanted to share something that happened just a couple of weeks ago. Speaking of that kind of connection, that alignment. You know, I was going through my day and, you know, before I opened to any book or years ago to a bookstore, I would ask the divine universe to guide me to the material that was necessary. And they would kind of like glow or something. And now I've always done it through the use of the internet. Before I go on, ask me to be guided. Because there's so much commercialized crap and garbage in both places, a bookstore as well as online. Right. It was kind of an unusual thing that happened. I was uh, just going on, Carrie, I saw a picture that someone had sent. I, oh, I liked it. But normally I'd go back to my work. Time. Something told me to go forward to the next one. And Carrie, I looked and it was gorgeous, Carrie. It was mm -hmm. a beautiful, mm, how can I say it? Um, gemstone red heart and beautiful wings that were drawn and it captivated me i had to look and it was an amazing feeling a picture from it and i kept staring at it and i thought oh i've got to download this but then i got that a call gorgeous yes so it hit me that way don't you think and we so can just imagine our own hearts this way right now this is this is why i'm going to share or say so this brought to me as you're seeing it affected you when you looked and saw it it affected me that strong way. And I've seen hearts before. You know, we all have. But this one drew me, okay? And so, Carrie, this is what ended up happening. Mm. <laughs> a couple of days later, I, you know, went away from this. And I'll stop this share. But a couple of days later, I opened the computer again. And, Carrie, this is kind of the freaky thing. I had forgotten, you know, this was supposed to be the crop circle season and all that. And I had studied them from right. the 60s, 70s on, you know. But... I hadn't, I was doing so much. I had forgotten about all that. Right. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well, that's fine. So sure enough, I ended up opening the computer right away. And it said first crop circle of the singlin at the season, sorry, in the UK, this was May 26. And I want to share to the audience. This was two days after I had seen that heart. Yeah. I think I saw this one. Yes. Amazing. How can I get that image hitting me so strong two days before? Yeah, this? and th this really looks just like it, Antonia. I mean, oh. it's really that those <laughs> wings going up and the yes. heart in Here. the middle, yes. almost identical. And, and, you know, I say breathe, <laughs> smile, and love. And we mm -hmm. know that when we center in the heart that it's, I don't know, 50,000 times stronger than the brain. I mean, the power... Yes. The brain is just our organizational mechanism, but the heart is the mechanism for our soul to, to resonate and communicate in this world. And we do it through all different levels of our senses. And this is what happened from the Piscean Age you discussed in this overlay. Jesus taught basically to open the heart, heart chakra, literally, how can I say, going into go show love and compassion and care. And so ultimately, we promised to allow that opportunity to come. And this is a reminder with those wings to keep expanding that love and loving center or energy of compassion or mm. care for not only humankind, but for the earth herself and every being surrounding it, on it, Beautiful. in it. Beautiful. Wow. Now, that is awesome. <laughs> that would have been fine. I thought, well, you know, I'm hard and fast skeptic, so I like proof, right? So Carrie, I thought, oh, that could have been a fluke, but oh my God, how amazing. A couple of days later, of course, we get the news about all the protesting going on, which is um, a planned ability to destabilize and create a lower vibratory yes. rate on the okay and humans. Yes. It's planned. And so I thought, wow, this is really something. This is actually, they're trying to literally um, show the fight of dark and light, the negative energy against the positive energy. And I said, that's wrong. They're trying to show it in a skin color. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. And I said, realizing that, it's a fight of good against evil or negative against the lighted path and they're negatively or darkly inclined. And I thought that's the fight or the war that's been going on that we talk about through the cosmos all this time. Right. Uh, the fight of light and dark. So remember, we're going into this brand new age, but people think we're just going to magically get there. So all of a sudden my thoughts in those two days, a couple of days after this, 
where, oh, wow, it's that dark and light. And then Casey states that there's as much good in the worst of us as there is bad in the best of us. So it doesn't behoove any of us to criticize or judge the least of us. Mm. So he's saying, oh, I thought, oh yeah, yin and yang. So in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, that's a beautiful statement. That's what's going on, the yin and yang, that balance. And I carry, I gotta show you, May 30th, two days after I had done that same thinking. Yes, there's the yin yang. Correct. And Which so is, what I thought about this, as, as complex as it may seem or feel, I thought, I'm one individual. If I'm picking this up, that means all humans can. Yes. The four, we see the four, the North and South Pole or Equator. You can see the yes. lines, four sacred directions. Yes. It's all encoded right here. The yin-yang symbol is actually a two-dimensional depiction of the Taurus field. So, Correct. and I've been having amazing, an amazing experience lately. Um, I did a few show, couple of shows last week on um, the Hopi prophecy and talking yes. about the river is moving very fast and don't hold on to the shore and see who is yes. in there with you. But I've been having this image of a portal that is moving very fast and the molecules and the atoms of creation moving very fast through that in transformation through that portal and then Marek my husband said yes and I'm experiencing it as a Taurus field so I was experiencing the inside of the Taurus Correct. field that tube that is the portal and then he was experiencing yes. so what you just talked about this vibratory rate going up you see mother earth doesn't see it as discomfort and so what she sees it as a need to cleanse yes a need to cull a need to rebirth and so we should view it as a beautiful birthing process. You wouldn't stuff the baby back into the mommy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, <laughs> you want to let the baby come. And this new age of Aquarius is the new baby. So as Mother Earth is giving birth to that, we should acclimate, accept it, rejoice in it, and not have this horrible fear, oh, it's going to be negative. It's not negative. It's just different. Each soul, 7.7 .7 billion right now on the planet to get to be born into this time frame had to have been through earth cataclysm before and excel. Mm, that was the criteria. Oh, wow. That and makes as Casey sense. States, <laughs> yes. Casey states, there's literally, and why I bring it up because of his, his hum humility as well as his accuracy, the most accurate. But what happens here is he states that there is no death, birth into the physical, birth right. into the spiritual one soul that lives forever. So what's the fear? My whole point is the fear tends to block intuition and the darkly inclined side that's trying to hold on lives just for you to have fear and chaos. So we promise with our spiritual tools to stay in the Zen. Where's yes. the Zen? You don't turn away from turmoil. You stay in the Zen. You yes. ground. You connect with mother nature, earth, the cosmos. And you, how can I say, are this spiritual warrior, so yes. to speak. And you're holding the light between earth and humankind. And that's what you're really doing. Goosebumps as I'm talking about it. Mm -hmm. But it's important at this time that we stop that garbage. And so intuitively, each soul on the planet promised to be a certain place when these changes happen. My hope is that they'll go there and follow because we have free will. Yes. So they're supposed to be an integral point to that people that they'll be meeting where they're going so we can rebuild and we rebuild this spiritual world, not only just to survive, but to thrive while doing so and rebuild for generations to come, yes. which is our promise. It's not about us to have a good old time, pina coladas on the beach all the, every day. There's work to be done to bring in this beautiful uh, Aquarian age of holding that line. Right. Tell us a little more about this focal point. You know, what is this? Um, what is this energetic point for us? And what so this energetic point life? is opening us, us up to the truth. June 21st. This is a special one because of the, the three eclipses on top of it. It's in that time oh. frame. Are those yes. solar and lunar? Or? Solar and lunar. We're getting ready to have the solar. And then one more after that, the July, the June 5th one, the June 19th one. Right okay. Before the equinox, uh -huh. as well as the one on July 5th. Okay. They're like a pair. So if you think of sun dogs, you know, the, the equinox being the center and then the, the two on the side have an impact or an effect on us. 
Right. It always does. So energetically, even the solar eclipse uh, and the lunar eclipses uh, have an effect on the individual's birth data uh, through their birth chart in the houses where they're going to be affected for the next six months and the world and every country is impacted. So remember what I mentioned about the veil being torn down. That is what is happening. Tell us a little more about that, the veil being torn down. The construct has been done, people will call them the archons, the word is coming really strong, as well as they're all the negatively inclined. 3% of the beings throughout the divine universe do not like humans. They don't think we have the right to evolve to this higher nature. 97% uh, are benevolent and help us in each and every time through these beautiful, how can I say it, um, changes, this growth, this evolution. Remember, Earth is growing at a certain vibratory rate where humans have to match it. We can see that with the Schumann resonance that was discovered in 1950 by Dr. Schumann. Right. The interesting thing was 7.83 hertz. It's been pinging for the last three years. I've been watching it literally all the way up to 132. Wow. Back down to 16. Yesterday it was 73. So these correlate to making an impact on us to prepare us from a heart and soul level in and out all the way through to become this more aware being, this more I can say it's spiritually aligned being to the cosmos. And when I say spiritual, do you understand it's more than just meditating and then we're done? We're supposed to apply the information out there. And that's what I find was different. We can't just say, okay, that's nice. We need to, A, Casey says, meditate at least 10 to 15 minutes every day. That yes. works. He said even a minute is better than that at all. Mm -hmm. But normally humans aren't taught that. Well, and, and I say... Look, the most important thing that we can do is follow our heart. And we're really taught culturally not to do that. We're taught to stay in certain positions, to produce certain things. And yet, if we will breathe, smile, and love and access our own intuition and what's truly in our hearts, we will begin, um, we'll be begin moving forward in the kind of way that um, Casey was talking about and that you're talking about we're aligning more with the harmonics of what are going on. And I know the Schumann resonance is really kind of the frequency that can be measured from the earth, correct? Correct. And correct. we, not only we affect that, we feed into it, we participate in it. And as we become more connected with each other as a collective too, we right. really help raise that frequency. And that's as you said, it is part of this great shift of the ages. And look how much consciousness there is right now and how much awakeness in contrast to darkness that's still there. And to Like I said, we don't want to just ignore the darkly inclined because remember, right. if you're a spiritual warrior, you have to be aware. Yes, we, like I said, it's maybe uncomfortable to look at, as someone said, um, but we need to look at it because remember, spiritual warriors, light weavers, light bearers, light workers, we promised to keep the vibratory rate, not be frightened and afraid of it, hide and be able to know you're strong enough to conquer whatever comes without fear whatsoever. But Edmund Burke, a statesman out of Ireland in the 1760s, was he says, evil triumphs because good men do nothing. Right. And so what we're doing is this veil I just talked about is being pulled down so we can see like, oh, this is really happening. We're not supposed yes. to just uh, turn away like it's not happening and just only focus on the dynamic energy. We have to focus on the dynamic energy while holding and trying to send it. So believe it or not, I have been sending for a few, several weeks as much telepathically and as much light and energetic that I could to Bill Gates and the like, mm. to all those people in the world for them to be aware because they've lost. Can you imagine? They think they have everything because they have money. They didn't right. realize they have nothing because they don't have a soul alignment. Right. I remember listening to uh, Bill Gates had a, um, a talk he did. Someone asked, the journalist asked, well, what do you think about the human soul? And Bill Gates, this is years ago. He said, well, I haven't any proof that such a thing exists. Right. So you see how misaligned, but that's just indicative of the larger portion of the population that it is your and my brother and sister that we promise to inspire. Right. This time. And I call it, um, allowing light to shine in the darkness. I mean, Bingo. and it is through that that we dissipate the shadows. Bingo. So we keep focusing on light and the light could keep chasing. I don't care what it tries to do. No fear. You stay in your zen. You stay in your focus. That's your, right. How good is your vibratory rate if it gets shaken with something horrible? 
No, yes. you stay. You use all your abilities to change. What do you, you hear those stories about mothers when their child is trapped in her car, they'll lift the car up. Right. Where did that energy come from? That's physical energy. Yes. But she didn't think and concentrate. And, it came know. from her soul. Thank you. <laughs> and it's just like when I say breathe, smile, and love. And we literally shift the neural plexuses in our brain to Thank be... You a radiant being of love and light presence in this world. We emanate Amen. a frequency. It's like being the salt in the soup, the herbs in the soup. We are feeding that level of consciousness into this collective. And as light is being cast on the shadows and things begin to change, we really have the capability of transforming this into what I like to call the whole new earth. Correct. And what is happening with this new earth is what we're preparing for. So remember, a lot of people have been lost with the dark some mask or their suppression. And so remember, they have to come out of that if they choose. Yes. It's free will choice. And so what there we'll see from this equinox on, we'll see they have, they have this ability with these eclipses to open and be aware if they choose. So Sagittarius against the 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 note the axis of Gemini will be there. A lot of um, misinformation with great information. They're supposed to learn to discern the truth in the interior. So the elite are aware of all this. They don't want to release the rain. But we know it's ours. We, in, we are yes. supposed to create and inherit. Yes. And so transforming collectively. And so I want people to stop this thinking that if they think about the earth changes, they'll make them happen. Or if they think about Pizzagate or Pedagate or any of that, satanics that'll make it happen where's your zen did you lose your vibratory rate when you walk into that dark room if you're lighted what happens like you said carrie it lights the whole room up right if one candle is in there and what you're trying to do is keep your zen don't lose it out of fear so it's important that every light worker change that dynamic you're gonna let that happen that's your brother and sister that's happening to right are you better than them that you're gonna allow that so what we have to do is be aware, which is why I said the veil is coming for this new period. And people thought it can magically happen. Yeah, we would be in the golden age if 7.7 .7 billion for one minute were in that collective thought of beautiful compassion, love, and care. Yes. We would transform into the golden age of the Aquarian age. And that's called but heart that's, coherence. Thank you. So if we use this collective, that collective is the group, the mantle, literally. Yes. That pulls that forward into this beautiful vibratory rate coming up for the planet and humankind. So we will be, like I said, telepathic. One of the qualities will have lighter bodies, more, less dense bodies. Okay. Things as we keep progressing into this new period of um, deeper into the 21st century, as we promised. And so by 2038 to 2040, we should be back on track again, but in this lighted manner, it's a beautiful te telepathy and spiritualizing the earth for the first time in a few mm. thousand years. Yes. Okay? <laughs> so we're supposed to have this consciousness through, like I said, the vibration is supposed to go, go from us, from this beautiful lighted Zen, through our plants, through our homes, through our energy, through everything we do. And even when we're faced with a dark or a sad event, where's that light? Why'd right. you put it away? Why do you want to turn away? There's where it needs to shine. Yes. Instead of being in discouragement or despair or anger or rage right. or hurt, I think there right. is a process, a grief process that happens like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe this actually exists on my planet. And yet now that it is coming out of the shadows, we do need to learn to stay in our center with it and stay radiating love and transformation scientists used to believe that we were on the outer spirals of the milky way galaxy and then they checked and found that we're right toward the center mm. that center or vortex i was always guided and shown since the 80s that this is where the, the vortex of all there is god creator the i am the source is the strongest and as humans get closer to that vortex we become more aware more spiritually connected more divinely connected and that's exactly what's happening but we have to go through the myriad of i said it then at that time this was in 2012 december 20th 2012 and i said that we could expect more and more asteroids more and more meteors 
And sure enough, that year they started with the Chalya Blinks hit. We are going through that again. But remember, your soul has experienced this before and knows this debris and these debris fields are coming in. Uh, I will say with the elliptical changes of the planet, it's normal, the binary star, we always talk about that. Those are real. Those are real qualities that actually happen in a cycle that's outside our known history. So that's why scientists are kind of freaking out. But I will tell you, everything I've been given for over 40 years keeps being confirmed by scientists every week. I just watched um, Michigan, Central Michigan, a couple of weeks ago, they had two dams that broke. Man-made dams, of course, wow. have been there for years, that broke and it wiped out the whole town, a couple of towns. And I thought those people got everything, their businesses, their homes wiped in two seconds to teach us non-attachment, mm. okay? And so, and also with resilience to rebuild. So all these beautiful small scenes or scenarios are happening worldwide so we can acclimate and learn how to help our brother and sister and also not to rely on our stuff. This is the stuff of what we have on the interior to help one another and also be guided by the beautiful technologies and the beautiful knowledge that's coming from the divine universe. Casey said something that's kind of unusual. He says that the planet Arcturus is the highest civilization in our system. He said more beings that are benevolent come here and incarnate, come from Arcturus and incarnate here on the planet mm. to help rebuild, to help change these beautiful trajectories right into from the Piscean age on and what you're feeling from this equinox coming in these three eclipses happening right away is this opening or that doorway coming in that you're a part of so on that day i would hope or suggest that we really focus um how can i say it, in a meditative phase to bring in yes. your highest predatory yes. rate um the soul we call jesus the christ of consciousness which is what it is the christ of consciousness or yeshua Casey states also came from Arcturus. Mm. So, but he was the first one that coined the word Akashic record. Mm -hmm. He was the first one that coined the word reading. Remember, this is just a humble man, but mm. believe it or not, after he continued to look at his lineage, this is Ra from Egypt. This is Zarathustra, who started the Zoroastrian religion, who was with Zen, who was the Jesus consciousness at that time. In other words, we have to understand time is only relevant on the earth. And so while we're here, this is for soul growth. And we have right. all the stuff, mentally, physically, spiritually, to get through it, if we'll but apply it. And the key is, you talked about it earlier, the lower energies are coming up, as you see, with the protests and the riots, even though planned and paid, many of them. What happens is your negative energy is being pulled up so you can see it. So you can get rid of it without blame to anyone else, not your childhood, not your family, not your circumstance. You're supposed to get rid of it because none of those energies will be able to fit in the new Aquarian age that we're going into. So it comes up so the person and the individual can get rid of it. And that's what you see happening. And so we all those little triggers everybody has, oh, don't push my, you're not supposed to have those triggers. You're supposed to control those emotions and choose higher emotions yes and those higher emotions are understanding awareness yes. consciousness divine collective mm -hmm. allowing so, for each person to have their path and their opinion bingo. and their choice bingo. and all this is really important well this is really wonderful antonia i want to thank you so much for talking about these things with us yeah. I, again i think the most powerful thing that people can do is really get especially on the 21st, maybe do ceremony, maybe have Correct. a little campfire, maybe share with friends, do a meditation, and really get centered on how, maybe how they want to focus on bringing in what's coming next in their lives, how they want to be really aligned with their soul. And um, also align with their brothers and sisters from the cosmos. Yes. Nice. I was just going to say, in that moment on the 21st, if I could suggest, Please. bring in their highest encounters with one another and on an individual basis. Stay in that pristine state as much as you can. Ground yourself. Run water over your fingers if the faucet of something gets a little off, just to ground in that moment in time. But stay in your zen. But that day especially, bring it forward in the highest way. So when we make this little change, when we have the winter solstices and the, the fall equinoxes, we can shift again with a nice gradient, keep moving up. Remember, it's steps we have to build into the Aquarian age. We don't just get an elevator and get there. Uh, <laughs> I love that. 
<laughs> okay. And I know that you have uh, a number of videos that you've taught kind of yes. what to do physically in relationship to the possibility of earth change. Actually, it's all three, spiritually, okay. physically. If you only hand prepare spiritually, you're not going to make it. If you only prepare physically, you're not going right? to make it. They have to combine. Okay. And it's on my website at antonialau.org. And there's up at the top, let's just say the world changes a free, it's a free series broken into 12 pieces so they can look. But these three are necessary. Mental, physical, and spiritual change has to take place. No fear, no mental need for it, no time for it. Spiritually connect, align, and physically prepare so you'll be safe through Mother Earth's birth. Nice. Birth. And we can put the link to your site under the under the video too so people can find it anything else you'd like to tell us as we live navigate these times of great change i think people have to understand and be proud of themselves for asking to be incarnated exactly during this time go inside self don't be afraid what did you promise as your soul's mission not only for your soul growth what did you promise how did you promise to leave the world better than you came remember for the generations to come in this Aquarian age you're laying the groundwork. You're laying the foundation. Each individual is. That's really beautiful. And I love that. And I, I want to em, embrace that and embody that. And, um, and I think the other question I'd like to hear your thoughts on is there's a lot of chaos going on right now. And I think, you know, people are scared. They're uncertain. You know, there's been a lot of things bounced around from the COVID to the, you know, yes. the riots and all of this stuff, which I really believe are just part of the, the dark right. entities that have been running things, creating chaos and creating separation right. so that we will continue living in fear. And for us to awaken to that, to get into our center, to choose our path, to choose con what's creative and constructive to do each day. And in the midst of all this, what would you suggest to people? In the midst, you observe. You don't have to react. You respond in a way that works, but you observe it. Don't turn away. If you don't see what go is going on, how can you avert or know? And then also align. Two things. Use your physical eyes and use your third eye, the, your pineal gland, to feel where you need to go, what you need to do. But don't turn a blind eye to your brothers and sisters that are going through pain, depression, grief, all that. Keep yours in and send that thought to them. In the area or in the home or to the person share that energy to them they're going to need that and we can do that even from a distance we don't have to be right there Always. where someone is but we can look in if i could see or hear the hearts or they could hear me the yin yang symbol and have it the next day if they can hear me from that far away or i can hear them vice versa can't we be heard throughout the cosmos yes okay so let's envision together the new earth let's envision these changes taking place in a way that is uplifting that we choose to live in an uplifting way and to support the positive creation of humanity as we move into new ways of being and doing the darkness comes out of the shadows light is cast light on it these things <laughs> huh? what was light them up <laughs> light them up yep and these things <laughs> fall away we breathe smile and love remember heart coherence is actually a measurable state and as we enter into this state we literally change ourselves to change the world antonia thank you so much and thank you so very much for having me yes we'll see you soon on this great rainbow of light okay ciao everybody Empower your life as a 21st century superhuman with host Carrie Kiristar Ellis and guests. Navigate these times of great change with Carrie's 21st century superhuman book series, being called the most important books on the planet and guidebooks for our times. You are a creator. Remember to breathe, smile, and love. For as we change ourselves, we change the world. Learn more at 21stCenturySuperhuman.com. Thank you.